If you've clicked this video, you're probably female between the age of 25 and 40. Maybe you're a single parent and you're working on an access course so you can go to university. That tells me a lot about you as a person. You are somebody who is interested in helping others. You are somebody who is interested in creating a better life for yourself and your family. You care. When I started my access course in 2021, I found there was little information available to help me. This series of videos will give you real examples of my submissions, allowing you to stress less and focus on your journey. I'm building this channel for people who want to improve their circumstances. That's you. I have a lot more help and advice I can give you on self-improvement. Stay tuned, keep an eye on my channel, and together we can all make it. Hi, and thanks for clicking. This video covers Unit 13, Social Factors in Health and Social Care for the Access to Higher Education Nursing course. For my assignment, I was tasked to write an academic report, which investigates, just bring that up here for you now, which investigates the key social issues that influence health and social care with a focus on the delivery of proactive care to vulnerable adults with particular reference to the care of dementia patients. So you can see the full description of the assignment brief here on the screen. Um, so please do check that your assignment question is the same as this. Um, following this, I was also asked to complete a timed assessment. Um, so this video will show you the essay that I submitted in full for the assignment question and also it will tell you what to expect from your timed assessment and I did receive a distinction for this module. So there is one thing I will shush it's my dog sorry there is one thing I will disclose I do not have the actual timed assessment questions um, I didn't write those down when I did the timed assessment and I can't get to them now, but I do know what the topic is um, and I will show that show that to you um, towards the end of the video after we've gone through the assignment. So stay tuned because I also want to give you my top tips for completing your access course and also give you my specific feedback that I received from my assessor as well. So looking at my academic report, this is the first page that you will see here. This is the title page. Um, as you can see, I've put the module name, the unit number um, and my name. So other things that you could put include your submission date. You could put the word count. You could put other information on that. Sorry if you can hear noise. My children are at home and my extra children are also here, which is my neighbor's children. So. Um, for terms of reference, I wrote this academic report has been written by Emma Bushnell for Unit 13 for LearnDirect in April 2021. The purpose of this report is to provide information about key social issues in health and social care, particularly relevant to the social health model, social motivational factors of health and the role of social support networks in recovery. Also outlined is how a lack of support impacts patient outcomes with a focus on dementia sufferers. So I will say that like anything to do with psychosocial and um, anything to do with like social health, I really find difficult. So I don't know if that's the same as you, but I found these types of assignments really difficult. So I was actually really surprised to get a um, distinction on these ones. But if you stay obviously tuned and have a look at what I wrote, hopefully that will help you to write yours as well. So for the contents, I just put a list of what I was gonna go through and then gave the page numbers. For research methodology, I wrote, this report has been created using secondary qualitative research collecting from, collected from LearnDirect materials, relevant websites and eBooks on health and social care and dementia, cited in the bibliography section. Where quotations have been made, references are provided in the references section. And then for findings, I wrote, the role of social motivational factors and in health and ill health so you will notice that I give like a small title above each section and I use that to sort of separate out the essay. So I recommend that you do that as well. So I wrote social determinants of health or social motivational factors, factors such as gender, education, income and housing have been found to have a profound effect on the health and well-being of a person. The Marmot Review 
published in 2010, details many important findings about health inequalities. The Local Government Association says the Marmot Review proposes an evidence-based strategy to address the social determinants of health, the conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age, and which can lead to health inequalities. One of the key findings of the report claimed people living in the poorest areas of England will die seven years earlier on average than those in richer neighbourhoods. And these health inequalities are generally preventable. A pertinent statement from the publication says, inequalities are a matter of life and death, of health and sickness, of well-being and misery. The social model of health was created to help policymakers and healthcare professionals to understand how these factors fit together and has been used since the 1970s. Dahlgren and Whitehead illustrated the characteristics that occupy the core of the model and a, created a diagram with a rainbow effect to show the array of factors which produce health inequalities and inequalities. And I put that in appendix one, which I'll show you at the end. In government research and analysis of 2017, it was reported the social gradient across many of the determinants listed contribute to health with poor individuals experiencing worse health outcomes than those who are better off, and that income and work are two most important determinants of health and well-being. Sociologists believe the differing health outcomes across society are unnecessary and avoidable, although there is a clear relationship between patterns of mortality, morbidity and socioeconomic status. Nettleton also writes about how individuals think of health and illness in more broader terms than ever before, considering nutrition, vitamins, complementary medicines as options for improving health and well-being, and many are moving away from the previously dominant paradigm of biomedicine. And I wrote, the role of social support networks and how a lack of support impacts health. A person's social network contains their family, friends, co-workers, neighbours, and anyone else in the the individual interacts with on a regular basis. In the health service, a social network is often provided by a multidisciplinary team of healthcare professionals for patients using a care plan. The care plan is created using a person-centered approach which involves direct communication between patient and caregiver, as well as family members and other members of staff. Patients diagnosed with dementia are given a care plan, which includes how long the patient can expect to do things that are important to them, information about services that can help and how to access them, any health conditions which need regular monitoring, and the name of a health or social care person who will coordinate the different kinds of support needed. It has been concluded that people who receive full support from both their health professional and their social support network are more likely to comply with the actions necessary for their recovery. The NHS and local authorities provide a number of services to encourage healthy living to, and to help people give up unhealthy habits. For example, the NHS provide hypnotherapy to support people who are trying to stop smoking and to also offer options for helping people to manage their weight. It is thought that poor social support is linked to loneliness, especially in elderly people. An article written by Kay Cherry for Very Well Mind said, <clears throat> sorry, Poor, poor social support has been shown to alter brain function and further stated this has increased the risks of alcohol abuse, cardiovascular disease, depression and suicide. Research on the topic shows there are other negative associations with a lack of support and socialisation, including poor self-esteem, loss of reality, decreased ability to learn, decreased sense of empathy, inflammation and reduced resilience. A 10-year study conducted by researchers for four different universities across the UK uh, which found negative social support is linked with an increased risk of dementia onset. The researchers studied the data of over 10,000 dementia-free participants between 2002 and 2012, and findings show 3.4% developed, de developed dementia in some form during the period of the study. Professor A. Steptoe of UCL said, our findings add to the growing evidence of the relevance of social relationships with cognitive health in older age. And then about dementia, I wrote, the NHS defines dementia as a syndrome associated with an ongoing decline of brain functioning and lists symptoms such as memory loss, reduced thinking speed and trouble understanding and regulating mood. The NHS says suffer sufferers of dementia benefit from staying socially active, speaking to people about their dementia and asking for help from their family and friends. Plus exercise also provides much needed stimulation and energy for vulnerable people. Family members and friends can help by assisting with daily activities and encouraging the individual with dementia to be as social and active as possible. Due to the severity of systems, some dementia sufferers are supported in NHS, hospitals or care homes. One third of all dementia sufferers living in residential care and an estimated 25% of hospital beds occupied by people with dementia. 
Care home settings are regulated by the Care Quality Commission and must adhere to policies including the Care Homes Regulation 2001. These policies and procedures are put in place to protect vulnerable people, particularly with decision making and safeguarding, which are outlined in an amendment to the Mental Capacity Act 2005, known as Deprivation of Liberty Safeguards. Unfortunately, dementia patients are at a higher risk of problems such as getting lost out in public, co um, coping, that should say coping, coping with money and understanding if someone is taking advantage of their ill health. This highlights the vital importance of reliable and honest caregivers. General advice given by the NHS and charities such as the Alzheimer's Society say a caregiver should value the person with dementia, being flexible and tolerant, listening and showing affection and finding activities which can be done together. Also caregivers must show respect, using the person's preferred name, being kind and reassure, reassuring, that should say, should really proofread your work. <laughs> being kind and reassuring, respecting privacy and being sensitive where required. So for conclusions, I wrote the amount of evidence available to show social motivational factors are highly influential when it comes to health and ill health of a person is overwhelming and undeniable. It is clear that less fortunate people are more likely to become unwell, whilst people who are better educated, have a higher income and live in an affluent area with low crime rate are much more likely to be able to prevent ill health. Ill health. It seems that social networks play a big role in helping a person with dementia to live well. Family, friends and social support groups can have the biggest impact, but support from healthcare professionals is also important and should be sought out by dementia sufferers so as much help can be given as possible. Then for recommendations I wrote, there are many health and social care books which outline the key social issues for vulnerable people, including those with dementia, and research studies on this topic are vast. It would be recommended to conduct further reading to discover more in-depth information. Age UK has many articles of information and advice and also offers a range of services for people feeling lonely or needing support. The government website has many updated, updated policies which give information on how they hope to tackle the problems elderly people are facing with lack of support and increasing cases of abuse in care facilities. Um, so that is my full essay. Um, as I said, that did get a distinction, so um, it must have hit all of the uh, requirements. Here are the references that I used. And the bibliography is here also. Now, I've just noticed that what I've done is I haven't included all of the references also in the bibliography. Again, it's just an oversight. I was probably rushing. I was really trying to finish this course as quickly as possible so I could get into university. But all of the references should also appear in your bibliography. So make sure that you have that. And then for the appendices, I included this um, rainbow effect uh, diagram by Dull Green and Whitehead. Um, and that was the only one in the end. I do remember when I was writing this essay, I did have more appendices, um, but I ended up taking a lot of information out to fit the word document, um, the word count. So I was. I remember being a bit worried at the time that this wouldn't pass because it didn't have enough of the information, but it, it did pass and obviously I got a distinction. So my key recommendations for you when completing this assignment is to go through your course materials with a fine tooth comb and then really look up dementia from external websites as well. So for example, um, the foundation which works with dementia, which I can't even remember what it's called, right now but anyway the foundation that works with dementia sufferers so you want to look that up um age uk anything like that who's working with dementia sufferers um, look at that of course the nhs website make sure you're using that in fact i might have it in my references and then i can show you sorry if you can hear a ringing that is my daughter on her bike outside <laughs> um anything from public health england anything from the department of health um, the Marmot Review um, you can find online as well. So make sure you are using and referencing those. So in terms of the timed assessment then, I just want to find this to show you. So it's not there. Let me just find the section where it is. Sorry for my face. Okay, so you can see here. Let's see if I can make this bigger. A bit of a technophobe, so bear with me. Here we go. 
So timed question feedback. So I, I can't find the actual timed question and I'm so annoyed that I didn't write it down because a lot of people have since asked me what was the timed question and they got worried about it. And I remember being really worried about it as well. Um, but don't worry about it because it's just a case of pass or fail. You can't get a merit or distinction on the timed question. You just need to pass. Um, so for question one, the assessor feedback says you have explained the sociological factors influencing the relationship between patients and the health professionals using the macro and micro levels of analysis. Now, I don't actually recall doing that. I'm sorry. It was like a year ago. So. I'm guessing that in the course materials, you will be able to find details about the macro and micro levels of analysis um, and the relationship between <clears throat> patients and health professionals. So if I were you, I would print that or write it down before you start the timed assessment and um, have that near you when the timed assessment um, is, has begun. And then the next question, it says, you've explained the relationship between a doctor and a patient using the functionalist perspective outlined by Werner. So again, if I were you prior to starting it, I would look that up in the course material. So they can't feasibly ask you something that isn't in the course material. So I would definitely either if you're concerned that this might you might have a different question, you could either print your course materials to make sure you have everything in front of you when you start the assessment or you could make sure you have your thorough notes um, to make sure that you definitely pass that assessment. So that would be my advice. So in terms of my assessor feedback, when I did submit this, I actually got a resubmit. Um, so she said here, I needed to revisit this um, the section as it must relate to dementia and resubmit. So what I've read out to you is my resubmission that did get a distinction. So don't worry about that. But overall, she said um, a much better section. Well done. So whatever I originally wrote was obviously rubbish, but then she liked what I put after. And then for her final feedback, she said, you have an excellent report here. Well done. Um, there is confusion between your reference list and bibliography. Again, this is an oversight. I've done this on a couple of my assignments. I don't know why. I think it's just through rushing. So make sure you take your time to um, proofread your work and double check that everything from the reference list is also in your bibliography. Um, and then she put, I would have liked to have seen some information from a suitable charity, e.g. Dementia UK. So that was what I was looking for a minute ago. So Dementia UK, have a look at that and use that. Um, and then she wrote, however, you have shown an excellent understanding of the subject area, supported by a number of citations. Um, your references are in Harvard, Harvard format, and I see no issues with spelling, grammar or format. So well done. So overall, I'm happy with that um, feedback. Um, I'm sure I'm sure um, that you will also get fantastic grades. So um, good luck. Make sure to go through all of your course materials and write down all of the key points so that you make sure those are included in your assignment. Um, and I wish you all the best. So please check my channel for help with your other modules.